the in the last class we were discussing the firm's value chain. We discussed the uh, value chain diagram given by Porter. Just to have a brief recap, what is value? Value is the price that a buyer is prepared to give for a product produced by the firm. As long as the price that he is prepared to give is more than the cost that is incurred by the firm, then the firm makes a profit that is it makes a profit margin. Otherwise, it makes a loss. According to the diagram which is given by Porter, the key components of the firm's value chain are the primary activities. The primary activities has got five important components. One is the inbound logistics, second is the operations, third is the outbound logistics, fourth is the marketing and sales, fifth is the services. This primary activities is supported by support activities which are four in number namely the firm infrastructure, the human resource management, the technology development and the procurement. All this leading, leading you to draw the firm's value chain. So, this is how the firm's value chain looks like. You have the primary activities, you have the support activities and depending on the value that the firm is able to create, the firm makes a profit or a loss. So, this is the way a firm operates as per the value chain given by Porter. So, this is a very important concept in strategic management and also for a firm. A firm should know where it can make, it can maximize its value, those components where it can maximize its value. Decisions taken in those particular areas will help the firm to make or realize higher profit margins. Okay. Now, let me read for you a few small uh, 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 a few small things given by Porter in his book. According to him, differences among the competitor value chains are a key source of competitive advantage. Corporate value chain analysis goes through the following steps. One is examining each product's value chain, product line's value chain then determining which of the activities can be considered a strength or a weakness. Then the second step is to find out the linkages with each product lines value chain that is connections between the way one value activity is performed and the cost of performing differently that is an example can be quality control. To gain competitive advantage in the market, a function may be performed in a different way with different results. For example, total quality inspection may add value to the production cost, but this may be offset by savings that accrue from repairs not being done for the defective parts. Examining potential synergies among value chains of different product lines or business units. This is the third step. Each of these value elements has an inherent economy of scale. 
where lowest possible costs are incurred per unit of output. If a product is produced at a level not good enough to reach economies of scale in distribution, it can be substituted by another product in the same distribution channel. This is referred to in as economies of scope resulting when the value chains of two separate products stroke services share the same activities that is marketing channels or manufacturing facilities. It is possible that the cost of joint cost, cost of joint production of multiple products will turn out to be less. So, sometimes uh, people will ask you about this economies of scope, when does this economies of scope really come in. So, if you really reading it back again, if a product is produced at a level not good enough to reach economies of scale in distribution, it can be substituted by another product in the same distribution channel. This is referred to as economies of scope resulting when the value chains of two separate product stroke services share the same activities. It can be marketing channels or manufacturing facilities or both. It is possible that the cost of joint production of multiple products will turn out to be less. So, these are the differences which among the competitor value chains which a firm can use as a key source of competitive advantage. So, just gives you an idea of how a value chain is extremely important for the working of a firm. So, this is uh, and similarly one other important aspect of the value uh, firm is its uh, culture, the corporate culture. So, just giving you some idea of what a corporate culture means, I will just read for you from my book, the exhibit 6.4 on corporate cultures as competitive advantage at ABB. ABB stands for Asia Brown Bovary. This is available to you on page number 98 of the book, the third edition on strategic management. The Zurich based ABB, Asia Brown Bovary AG, is a worldwide builder of power plants, electrical equipment, and industrial factories in 140 countries. By establishing one set of values throughout its global operations, ABB's management believes that it can gain a competitive advantage over its rivals Siemens AG of Germany and Francis Alcatel Alstom NV and GE of the US. Percy Barnevik, a Sw Swedish chairman of ABB, managed the 1988 merger that formed ABB from Sweden's Asia AB and Switzerland's BBC Brown Bovary Limited. At that time, both companies were far behind the world leaders in electrical equipment and engineering. Barnevik introduced his concept of a company with no geographic base, one that had many home markets that could draw on the expertise throughout the globe. To do this, he brought in a set of 500 global managers who could adapt to local cultures while executing ABB's global strategies. These people are multilingual and move around each of ABB's 5000 profit centers in 140 countries. Their assignment is to cut costs, improve efficiency and integrate local businesses with ABB's world view. ABB requires local business units such as Mexico's motor factory to report both 
to one of ABB's travelling managers and to a business area manager who sets the global motor strategy for ABB. When the goals of the local factory conflict with the worldwide priorities, it is up to the global manager to resolve it. Few multinational corporations are as successful as ABB in getting global strategies to work with local operations. In agreement with the resource based view of the firm Barnamic states that our strength comes from pulling together. If you can make this work real well, then you get a competitive advantage, competitive edge out of the organization which is very, very difficult to copy. See, this is what I just wanted to tell you which I have emphasized in the earlier classes also. So, if it is difficult for a competitor to imitate or copy your competitive advantage, then the product is going to have a longer lifetime. So, this is uh, I am if you really look at I am presenting to you a uh, one more uh, table. This table gives you with respect to the generic strategies of Porter that is the cost leadership, the differentiation and the focus. What are the risks that are involved? What are the risks that are involved? What is the risk of cost leadership? Cost leadership is not sustained. When is it not sustained? when competitors imitate, this is what I have been trying to impress upon you uh, in the earlier classes also. Suppose you are the technology changes, the attribute changes that you have made with respect to a product are such that it can be easily copied by the competitor. As long as your product does not hit the market, it is whatever attributes you have chosen to incorporate in a product are with held within wraps. As soon as it comes out into the market, everything is open. When everything is open, your competitor will be able to know what is the type of attribute changes that you have done vis-a-vis vis -vis his product. What is going to happen in such a type of a scenario? The competitor would like to find out whether if your attributes are better than his attributes, whether his product could be modified to incorporate the changes that you have made. Now, suppose he finds that incorporating the attributes that you have made into his product are difficult, then your product is going to have a sustainable competitive advantage. It will sustain for some, that much of time as long as it is not imitated. Suppose it is very easy to imitate the type of advanced uh, changes that you have made, attribute changes that you have made. Then the competitive edge that you lost, the life of the uh, competitive edge you got, the life of that is very, very, very less, very short it will be lost very soon. So, this is what normally happens when you have number of players in a competitive market scenario, an oligopolistic market, even a small player can disturb the equilibrium of the market by making some changes which may be difficult for others to copy. Now, so, this is the competitors, uh, suppose competitors imitate that competitive cost leadership is lost. Second is suppose you incorporated a few things in your product based on the current state of technology, that is based on the current state of technology, your product had let us say 1 to 10 attributes. Now, for your luck or ill luck, the technology changes, then what is going to happen? Then the person who is the next mover in the market will come out with a product which is a newer technology. This is what is happening 
with respect to most of the electronic products as you are seeing. So, what you thought was current just about 3 months back has got displaced or has got replaced by a newer version. So, happening to your mobile phones, happening to your TVs, happening to so many of the electronic products. The result is what you thought was the state of the art thing just about 3 months back to your great strange surprise find that so many new features added in a new product and it is it has replaced the old one. And many times for your ill luck let us say the product that you have you brought hardly 6 months back goes wrong for whatever reason then you may not be having the parts to repair it back also because the spares also will be phased out very fast by the company's concern. This is the type of scenario which you are going to which you are seeing in the present day competitive market. Then what is going to happen? Then that will eat into the cost leadership. So, this is happening with respect to most of the mobile markets. So, as of now if you really see Nokia is uh, having leadership in the Indian mobile market, but being threatened very, very fast. So, many whether it is the, uh, the companies which are coming out with the new products. So, with the Apple's new mobile phone sitting in the market and Blackberry is saying that so many new features we are able to give. So, Nokia is almost on the toes to match each of these attributes in the products in order to hold on to its market share and the changes that is taking place in technology. Nothing uh, more amplifies this than this telecommunication market where this 3G is making a fast entry or has even made an entry into India itself. Now, the other thing cost leadership is not sustained when other basis for cost leadership erode that is where I said where look at the other factors or the other aspects of the value chain. Suppose you lose out on any of the other aspects of the value chain also the cost leadership erodes. So, cost leadership maintaining this cost leadership a very important generic strategy, but is not sustained when such things happen. Then what is going to happen when you are not able to uh, sustain this cost leadership? What what might we have? What might happen is uh, you may lose the cost edge. That is the competitive cost edge in the market. Suppose you are also not able to differentiate your product from the competitor's product, what is going to happen? The proximity in differentiation is going to be lost. Then what can your competitor do? Suppose the competitor for him that is the time to move into the market, he may come with even lower costs in the product. So, cost focusers achieve even lower cost in segments. So, this is what is likely to happen, this is, a, this is the risks of cost leadership. The first generic strategy that was given by Porter. Then what is going to have, what are the risks of differentiation? When is differentiation not sustained? Again differentiation is not sustained when competitors imitate. So, if competitors start imitating your product, you really have a very bad time. Then second thing is basis for differentiation become less important to buyers. What do you mean by this? There is uh, you take the example of so many toilet soaps in the market. Each soap gives an advertisement. For example, you have this Santur, you have Lux, 
so many soaps coming out with different ads saying if you use santur or if you use uh, lux you your skin will be bright all those types of things now the next question is here is another soap which comes out with again with regular ads which is this soap this soap is the dove what does it tell you it tells you use this soap once that is this dose soap once you will not go in for any other soap at all that is you will leave all the other soaps that is santur lux or whichever you want to name it all the other soaps are gone or the whether is synthol so you will never use any other soap other than dove why does he claim that he demonstrates it with a test so he says that if you use any other soap you touch your skin it will be rough if you use this dose soap this touch your skin after the use of this dose soap it is so smooth it is having this moisturizing content and the effect of keeping your skin smooth which no other soap in the market can give so this is a type of competitive advantage which uh, the differentiation of with respect to the product which the which this soap is claiming over the other soaps in the market but when the people use it they do subscribe to that view that is when the consumer uses it they say yes i find that after using this dose soap my skin has really become smooth compared to other soaps when which i was using maybe the lux or whatever so he made try to shift to do so what is the, what is it likely to happen you are having a user shift taking place from other soaps to do okay that is because you are able to sustain the differentiation between your product and the other competing product suppose you are not able to sustain this then there is no base for differentiation then what is going to happen your differentiation in the marketplace that is a product differentiation the edge that you are gaining the competitive edge that you are gaining is lost similarly differentiation is not sustained when cost proximity is lost so suppose you say my product is priced at x the competitor's product is let us say 0.98x that is instead of x is at 0.98x the dis, the normal buyer for the normal buyer both may mean x only he may say what is after all this 0.02 difference mm, a difference of 0.02x there is really not much of a difference between this product and the competitor's product and then you are likely to lose that similarly what is going to happen when such a type of thing starts happening in the marketplace differentiation focusers achieve even greater differentiation in segments so what is going to happen is uh, the people who focus on differentiation they will come very hard on your product and they are likely to say there is not much of a differentiation between this product and our product so it is as good as buying the same product so this can happen in to any product in any market you whether it is a, a simple consumer product or a consumer durable or it can be a costly product also so this is happening now in all types of markets similarly what is the type of risk that this third generic strategy focus is likely to have risks of focus the focus strategy what is going suppose again it is imitated there is no escape at all so your focus where will you focus you are focusing on a particular market segment your competitor also keeps on focusing on the same segment 
and he is able to match every move of yours, then whatever edge that you had is getting slowly eroded, then the largest segment becomes structurally unattractive. That was your niche market for you, that niche market itself is becoming structurally inattractive, then what is going to happen? The structure erodes, so that structure itself that is the market structure itself erodes for the firm, then what is going to happen in the market that is in that particular market segment demand disappears. So, you have no takers for the product, this is the type of risk that this focus strategy can have that is when it will not get sustained. Similarly, basically broadly targeted custom competitors overwhelm the segment, what is going to happen? Suppose, uh, the competitors start overwhelming the segment, that is more and more players start coming into the segment. The segments difference from other segments narrow, okay. so your segment, market segment, what you claimed as niche, no longer being niche. Then the other, the advantages of a broad line increase. So, what will happen in such a type of situation? A new, a new player, new focuser sub segment the industry. So, a new player, a new person who comes into this whole scenario, he will sub segment the industry. So, this is these are some of the things which can happen to you with respect to the generic strategies. These are the risks that are associated with the generic strategies. Uh, we norm, I normally mention to you about this quality. So, you may do a product, you may come out with a better quality product in the market. So, what are the A, what are the dimensions of this quality? I am giving below for you the 8 dimensions of quality. This applies to, this is applicable to every product which is out in the marketplace. These are the normally the 8 dimensions of quality, first one is performance. What is performance? Performance refers to primary operating characteristics such as a washing machine's cleaning ability. You take a simple washing machine, why do you put your clothes to a washing machine? In the present day Indian context let us say why do you want to use a washing machine? You may say no time for hand washing. So, or the other reason which normally is given is that oh finding a maid servant has become very hard. Then the third reason which the housewife is fond of giving is the neighbors are having washing machines, why I should not have this washing machine. So, normally you tend to agree with all this, then what is going to happen? So, you buy a washing machine, when you buy this washing machine, you want to buy a washing machine which is very close to a hand wash, that is which is, which is able to replace a hand wash. So, it should give you as clean a wash as possible very close to a hand wash, that is its primary operating characteristic for a washing machine, that is an example. Then the second one that is an example of quality characteristic, the dimension of quality. Second one is the features, what is this features? These are referred to as bells and whistles like cruise control in a car that supplements the basic functions. What is this cruise control in a car? So, you normally have 4 gears in a car, there is also an overdrive gear that is a fifth gear. When do you go in for this uh, fifth gear? You go in for this fifth gear when you have reached a certain level of speed and uh, that uh, you find that the road conditions are such that you can go in for the 
overdrive that is you go beyond that 50 mark which is normally stipulated. They say you should be able to cross at least 45 kilometers per hour when you can go into this fifth gear otherwise do not go into the fifth gear you are really pressurizing the engine. The engine is put to lot of undue pressure. So, this is these are some of the features that you have in the automotive segment. So, this is uh, these are called some bells and whistles which are there which are which have come to uh, cars which are now in the Indian market. So, you name the car whether you have it is available to you even in your Indica which is one of the most common vehicles which are which is used in the Indian market whether it is for a taxi or some or even for a, the individual use. So, you have this uh, sometimes called as the mm, what do you call the middle class car in the in Indian market. So, most of it is used uh, most of them use the Indica for the simple reason it gives you that operational economy due to the difference in fuel prices between petrol and diesel. That is most of these diesel uh, this uh, Indica cars run on diesel. So, they give you this even this Indica car has this uh, overdrive gear. The third dimension of quality is what is called conformance. What is conformance? Degree to which a product meets standards. What do you mean by this? When a customer buys a product out of the warehouse, it will perform identically to what to that viewed on the showroom floor. So, what you exhibited in the showroom and what is the performance of the product outside both should be the identical. It should not be that your showroom washing machine is having better cleaning ability compared to the when one which is sold to the customer then it will boomerang on the wholesales. The fourth one is durability. What is durability? Number of years of service a consumer can expect from a product before it significantly deteriorates. There is a second line in this differs from reliability in that a product can be durable, but still needs a lot of maintenance that is not reliable. So, that is uh, reliability is that when your product keeps on wanting maintenance every month you suppose you are forced to take your car to the service station or the garage then you get fed up with the car use of the car only. So, this is the difference between durability and reliability of the product. Then the sixth dimension of quality is what is called serviceability that is the products ease of repair. Now, suppose you take a uh, you uh, number of uh, different types of automotives are there in the Indian market. Take some of the cars which are there like uh, the Fiat Uno which was a uh, which, which was a rave when it was introduced saying that so many people wanted to take this Fiat Uno, but unfortunately the company could not uh, keep to its delivery schedules. Uh, many of the consumers got cheesed off they they took away their deposits. Now, what is the type some, but some of them stuck to this Uno. Now, the what is the state of affairs with reference to this fear to know for the people who have bought this car now getting suppose your car goes for repair getting the proper garage for repair is the first question then the next question is after entering that proper garage whether the part that you want for the car is available or not. So, even the spare parts are not so easily available. 
the third one is the ex exorbitantly high price of the spares. Suppose your spares have to be are not easily available then the company charges you more for the replacement of the spares. So, the serviceability the ease of repair this whole thing itself is not there then it is lost then it loses on this dimension of quality then aesthetics that is how a product looks feels sounds or uh, tastes or smells depending on the type of product. So, a car how it looks so many times you just see a car and you say how cute this car is fall in love with that all those types of things. So, then uh, suppose you look at a diamond what is going to happen to a diamond. So, characterized by the four C's of and you find that uh, higher the carat the cost of the diamond is going up. So, then you, you go to a, a merchant a diamond merchant to find out about the purity of the diamond that is a clarity or whatever then the he is likely to say if you if you go to a very good diamond merchant in your city he may say he may put the diamond under a microscope and ask you to see that diamond saying that this is the diamond which I am giving you examine this for its purity and you just look at that diamond in that microscope what are you likely to see? You are likely to see the bottom of the diamond. The bottom of the diamond is visible to you in the microscope and he will say this is the level of purity which I am able to offer. So, that is why my price for the diamond is also higher compared to the competitors. So, this is a this these are different markets. So, when the price loses it is competitive advantage. So, higher the price it may gain a competitive advantage that is you are you are not looking at price as the differentiator you are going in for a diamond purchase when you are going in for a diamond purchase you know that it is likely to be priced high and when you know that it is likely to be priced high you may like to take the diamond which is perhaps the best in the marketplace. So, that price as the differentiator may lose its edge there. Okay. So, this aesthetics or whatever. So, this with is applicable not only to um, this dip, uh, you the normal products like this automobile or whatever, but it is also applicable to some of these high priced products like this diamonds. The last one perceived quality products overall reputation especially important if there are no objective easily used measures of quality. So, suppose you take a product and you find that the competitors product and this product you are not able to quickly make out the differences then what is going to happen? Then the brand name of the competing products will try to tell you how you can make this product A a quality comparison with product B. You say oh this salt is coming from the house of tortoise then it must be a quality salt. This salt is a packaged salt from a local player. So, the quality of this salt cannot be compared with this salt coming from the house of tortoise. So, this is a perceived quality perceived quality with respect to a product from the eyes of the customer or the consumer. So, he views this uh, tortoise 
the house of Tata's as always coming out with quality products anything coming out from the house of Tata's. So, he says that yes it is a quality product I am going in for this these are the 8 dimensions of quality. So, this is a very important uh, slide wherein I have brought out for you what are the risks that are associated with the generic strategies given by Porter. So, the generic strategies given by Porter are 3 one is cost leadership, second is differentiation, third is focus. So, I have brought out to you when is this when are these generic strategies not going to be sustained? What is the risk that is associated? I have also brought out to you what are these 8 dimensions of quality. So, many times people ask, ask this question, what are the dimensions of quality? Is quality having a dimension at all? Yes, quality is having dimension not just one dimension, it is having 8 dimensions of quality. So, it is having 8 dimensions. So, the 8 dimensions are performance, features, reliability, conformance, durability, serviceability, aesthetics and perceived quality. So, these are two important aspects which uh, you may give a good reading. So, this is uh, then we go further what is meant by key factors for success. So, this is what I just told you this is in order to gain competitive advantage this can be one of the routes that is this KFS or this CFS. So, who is the person to give this key factors for success? So, this uh, key uh, this KFS was coined by a gentleman from Japan, his name is Kenichi Ome. He said firms can use this KFS for gaining competitive advantage in the marketplace. So, when he gave this term key factors for success, so naturally the market started getting, getting enthused about this. What is this? A key success factor is a competitive skill or asset that is particularly relevant to the industry. He uses this term to play in the game. A competitor will usually need to have more minimum level of skill or asset with respect to each of the industry's key success factors. If a firm has a strategic weakness in a key success factor and it is not neutralized by a well conceived strategy, the firm's ability to compete will be weak. If a firm has strategic weakness in a key success factor and it is not neutralized by a well conceived strategy, the firm's ability to compete will be weak. Conversely, sustainable competitive advantages usually will be based on key success factors. In general, the successful firm will have strengths in the key success areas and unsuccessful firms will lack one or more of them. That is the key for success in a marketplace. A small uh, table is given to you. This table gives you the key success factors, then the second column gives you to increase profits, the third column tells you to gain market share. Let us look at a few of these. Suppose your key success factor is raw material procurement where is this going to be the key success factor to increase profits. You can look at gold mining, you can look at wine making as the industries where this raw material procurement is a KSF. So, it is that area where you require to be an adept to play in the game. Okay. 
it also is the key factor to play in the game for some of these industries to gain market share which are the industries sugar industry petroleum industry so your raw material procurement for a sugar industry and petroleum industry vital to stay put in the marketplace suppose you don't have your uh, petroleum oil, uh, the oil wells at all so where is the question of uh, marketing petroleum products it is not there now this is this you can just uh, see uh, what is happening in the world if you really look at the world the middle east it is the petrol economy the petrol economy that is this petrol uh, petroleum products which are coming out of these countries have made these countries cash rich that is the only main that is this main sustaining product of these economies now what is happening so they have formed a block what is this block this block of countries is known as opec oil producing and exporting countries so this opec block it keeps on deciding on the price of the oil per barrel so when the price of the oil per barrel shoots up what is going to happen all the countries in the world feel the shock because whether a country likes it or not it is dependent on petroleum products and when this oil producing countries raise the price of oil automatically the oil bill of these importing countries goes up then it is going to uh, what is going to happen it is going to really um, affect their balance of payments with respect to these countries okay so even the the world's superpower that is the united states is getting constantly ruffled about this oil price increase okay so this oil price increase by the opec countries mm, keeps on affecting the economy of a superpower like the united states so it wants to keep it or hold it in check as far as possible so putting all sorts of pressures and things like that there's a different area altogether so this is the next one you just look at the next thing which is listed out there that is raw material processing can be vital to increase profits for steel and paper industry and again to gain market share for the same industries so the raw material processing that you go through can be extremely vital similarly production fabrication extremely vital for this ic industry integrated chip hum it is coming in bulk volume so like a country like uh, this taiwan or this china now uh, now ka uh, this ic chips are dime a dozen say you were not forget about uh, japan where you earlier used to go so name the chip 8086 this is available to you of the shelf in such large numbers in these countries so then the tire industry so both these are this becomes a ksf both to increase profits and to gain market share similarly assembly becomes extremely important or a key success factor for the apparel industry and instrumentation and also to gain market share similar then design becomes a ksf to increase profits for heavy engineering industry and also to gain market share distribution becomes ksf for bottled waters or metal cans then to gain market share for home appliances cement industry distribution holds the key so many of these uh, cement companies especially the construction industry they want to wait till they get that particular brand of cement whether it is birla super or acc the construction industry the contractor 
or the individual builder also is prepared to wait for some time till this indus this brand of cement is made available. He, you may say this other brand of cements are there why do not you go in for this he will say okay, okay this is not suitable for the main uh, foundation it is okay for putting a compound wall he may say that or he may hold that view that is the individual consumer view. So, what is this the quality of the this Birla super or ACC holding this way for that. So, similarly that is the distribution holding to gain this market share then similarly look at marketing itself as a key success factor for all these branded cosmetics Hindustan lever having that extraordinary advantage of the marketing network for the liquor industry. So, both to increase profits and to gain market share it is a KSF. So, service is a KSF for automobiles for hotel industry no need to emphasize that. So, this is uh, if you it can suppose for an automobile you give a good service your profits will zoom. Similarly, for the hotel industry you give a very good service you can gain market share. So, this is the way a KSF works in the marketplace to gain competitive advantage. So, I have given you some examples of the key success factors the different types of industries where these key success factors can help to increase profits and to gain market share. We will continue in the next class. Thank you. Mm.